Hi right, guys, what's up? Uh, so I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video today. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done anything painting wise or modeling remotely. And this is somewhat in that category. And a lot of you will recognize my uh, Halo Nerf rifle that I customized last year, year before, whatever it was. Now, uh, since we've moved and everything, uh, it got a little dinged up. So bringing it over here just a little bit for some of the more egregious parts, especially here on the barrel. So that's some of the biggest chipping I've got. And then I guess I never realized that deep inside the barrel, it's kind of bad. And then there's a couple spots oh yeah, around this side. Hold on, I gotta be careful how I'm swinging this thing around. And uh, over here where it's definitely chipping and then down here it's actually crinkled so there's something about that orange plastic that uh, hasbro uses on their nerf guns that is rejecting paint and mind you i had a not just primer but a uh oh uh, what was it called not a leveling primer but <clears throat> definitely had a more robust thing that was supposed to help set it and you can see here on the charge handle even though nothing has gone on with this thing it has gotten absolutely ridiculous. Now, other than completely taking it apart, um, which I'm not keen on doing, I think what I'm just going to try to do is at least touch up the parts that have gotten bad, maybe feel back some paint a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is basically add some new matte black paint to it, uh, especially like if you look inside here. The funny thing is, I can't tell if that's the rust color or if that's actually the other thing. And look at that, you got paint flake on the back of my hand already. Um, but you can see right in here, just for, just for it existing, the paint is basically shrunk and cracked, even though nothing has happened to it. In fact, while we moved, it was wrapped up in a, uh, towel the whole time, and, you know, wrapped up, taped up in a towel. And that's what it caused. So, uh, for future reference, and I'm sure the, uh, the trigger, you can see one little tiny spot right down there on the trigger, but that's not that bad. Um, for future reference, don't. Don't do that, I guess. And actually, back there, the, the little button that releases the clip is okay. And for some reason, the actual mag itself is pretty okay. So I guess it's just an area that would receive any kind of actual <laughs> uh, battering, so to speak, where it's going to be a problem. So like I said, I think I've got black paint. I actually think I might still have some of the, uh, the actual primer left. And I'm going to retouch it in a few places. I don't want to have to do a full-on repaint. Uh, but I can definitely add some battle damage and stuff like that. So some of these bigger chunks, I'll just add some black paint, rub it back over once it's dry, and then give it some battle damage. And then when it comes up here to the uh, barrel, do the same thing. And uh, basically, I'm just going to kind of touch it up, touch it up, and then fuck it up. Hopefully. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've relocated to the kitchen because now I have workspace and some light. Laid down a towel because I don't want to fuck anything else up. This is what I was trying to talk about. Uh, Mr. Finishing Surfacer. So in theory, this should have worked. And I think in some places it did. Thanks for going off there, AC. So I'm going to use a little bit of this in the raw plastic areas. And then I'm going to come through with some proper matte black paint after that dries. And then I'm going to use silver leaf to basically add some weathering damage over the new paint areas. So like where it's chipped right here and right here and then back in here. Um, basically going to do that on all sides. I mean this side is way worse considering the charge handle is gross and bad. And then that really big chip there and then even in here. So I'll do what I can. Uh, ultimately, I really don't want to have to take it apart. Oh, I forgot about this spot right here. That was actually the first bit of damage after I dropped it one day. Look at that. A whole big chunk just came right off. Right there. Didn't even, didn't even do anything. I just touched it. Okay, so that's just proving more and more that that orange, that orange plastic sucks. And I can't remove the charge handle without disassembling the gun because it like plugs in completely and utterly. So, at least with this stuff. And then, one thing I'd like to do one day is make a thing that I can hang it on the wall from. That will basically hold it by the foregrip. Um, that that would just basically eliminate most of the damage it, it takes 
the per the accidental damage, not the purposeful damage. So, all right, let me get started here. Okay, so I've got a muffin tin here, so I could spray it in, basically use it as a as a uh, pallet, and I'm gonna be a little heavy-handed on it. Of course, I actually anticipated to take off some of the paint while I'm at it. Okay. And the funny thing is, I actually did touch up some of this when I first finished it. And I knew there were problems. Okay. Trying to see what I'm doing here. Yeah, that's definitely coming off there. It's fine. A little bit more paint. Come up here. Basically just spread it out. And like I said, I'm going to add battle damage to that. So, it's okay if it's a little chunky, not as perfectly smooth as everything else around it. Okay. Okay, so that's that for now. I can't flip it over just yet, but I don't know, maybe I can. Set up the tripod here. Okay. Let's flip her over. I don't want to set it down. Yeah, I think that's actually rust paint. That's not. Yeah. And like I said, I'm using this as a primer. And then I'll go through and actually repaint black paint over it. That's good. A little bit right there. And there. So the hard part is like, it would be wonderful to just do the whole damn thing over again. And I have a feeling that's going to be what happens one day, but definitely not today. Okay, so let's take the cap. Just prop this guy up a little. And then I'm going to let this dry. See, the cool thing is it's significantly thinner than the paints that are already on there. So it actually gives me a mask. It's kind of funny. In certain spots. Man, the dress fast. Like, real fast. So that's not too bad. I wonder, can I get it in here in the, in the crux of the thing? Way down up in there. That's not too bad. And then I'm going to add weathering dust and, and uh, weathering liquid to it after the fact. But for now, I'm going to give that some time to dry. I need to get some food. And then I'll work on actual matte black paint and then silver. Okay, there it goes. So, definitely got a lot more coverage here. Focus. There we go. And then even up here. So, I mean, I can still see, obviously, where I need to do the touch-up. It's not going to be perfect like it used to look, but I think I'll get it good enough. You know, add a little bit there. Damn, I almost feel like I can see the fucking orange through it already. 
So I gotta add that silver. I'm gonna let it dry for a bit longer than I did the first time. Go get some food. Let's see here. You know, things have changed up a little. Yeah. So, either way, let that sit for like 30 minutes, even though it's, I mean, it's a thin coat of paint as it is, but I mean, it's small touch-up stuff, but it's things that really affect the look because bright orange stands out, you know, ridiculously. And, you know, just looking at it here, so this was the surfacer, that's the actual paint, so, I mean, they're, they're similar as it is, but, you know, obviously going to be a little bit different. So with the handle, I'm going to dry brush the crap out of it and then probably try to add brush on some clear coat. And then with the barrel, I'm just going to brush on or uh, dry brush, purposely brush some silver into the damaged area and then probably give it a rub down with the same kind of gunmetal treatment I usually do uh, that makes it look like freaking metal. So that's because you can see the difference where I painted it. So I need it to be a little bit less obvious. And then I'll add a little bit of rust on top of that. So, good to go. Okay, so after letting that dry for a bit over an hour, should be pretty good. Now, what I've got here are my weathering powders. And I'm going to take a little bit of the silver. Just kind of give it a rub here. And that'll get it on the thing. I didn't quite go where I wanted it to, but I can live with it. And then just sort of brush it on like that. That gives it a little bit going on there. Gotta really get in here. Sorry, I actually went to the grocery store. I didn't just run off. Okay, so just add a little bit there. Now let's flip this over. And yeah, that works. Just. Get a little bit of gunmetal. Do that. I'll be end up changing that there. Okay, so get a little bit of gunmetal. Rub the guy over here. Probably way off camera, but it's okay. Good enough. So now what I need is a dry brush and add like a little bit of regular silver which I will do. So, got some silver leaf. I'm gonna take my pan outside. Let me fix that real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna try, try to do this. So now I've got some silver paint in the bucket here. And I'm gonna very, very lightly So, and then do the same over here. Now I don't like doing battle damage this way necessarily. I usually prefer to chip instead, but in this case it works. Also, let me just hit this whole guy here. Oh, looks like I actually took a chip off when I did that somewhere. Okay, so let's flip it over, set her back down. And you see areas like this were pre-chipped, but let's see here. And 
and I'll also dry brush a good bit of this so it won't just look like ass. So for the dry brushing, sorry the AC just kicked on, I've got my napkin here, get my chip brush as it's tend to be known, and I'm gonna wipe off most of the paint and then I can just that and get a little bit more here and I'll be dulling that with the powder and then some other stuff later so I did dry brush it initially along with the actual chip damage so it's not like it's the only time it's gotten properly dry brushed Oop. <laughs> actually I took off some of the paint there when I set it down, where to go? So, let me... and I'm sweating on the damn thing because, of course, I am. Okay, get really dry. Soak it up, really dry it off, and then I'm gonna work on this chip here the best of my ability. Try to soften that edge just a little bit there. Also, I think I'm going to come down here, add a little bit of dry brushing to the flashlight area. There's already some there, but I was going to add to it, right? And then this guy, get a little bit on there too. Okay, and then, like I said, I'm gonna soften it up with the other stuff. I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, so after a few minutes, I'm busting out this stuff, weathering stuff from, who's this from? Oh yeah, my, Mr. Hobby. And this is not paint, this is basically a wash. So I want to just coat the area in question. And because this is like a slit, it's actually going to work out kind of nice around the barrel here. I'm just going to go ahead and give it an extra bit around everything. And then even back here, 
there, and just kind of everywhere I feel like it needs it. I'll let it sit for a second. Try not to get this everywhere. Towel. And just lightly brush it away, but letting it settle in places. Kind of dab. And you can see what it does. And not a whole lot of other spots to put it on this side anyways. So I'll let that do its thing. Slip it over. And I'm using a brush that I only use for this because I never know how long this stuff will stay in. So and if you have like cracks and stuff, or you've got seam lines, this is what you want to use because it will build up in those areas. Because it is liquid, so it's it wants to do its job. It wants to move around. So that's why it's fun to use this stuff. Because this is basically soot colored. It makes sense to just use it all over the barrel and I have put rust and other stuff on it too before dirt for that matter so I also have basically mud mud flavor you know so probably use a little bit of that but I was also using the other weathering master for soot and I threw a little bit of the orange rust in there just dabbed in so that might have had an effect as well See, like, get a little brush, and then dabs, a little brush, so that you see, like, somebody tried to wipe it down. And the only thing I'll be lacking on this is a little bit of rust that happened under it, so we'll just consider it a new, a new bit of damage. Because the way I normally would do it, silver base coat, clear coat, a little bit of rough spots here and there then mask off the areas I want to reveal later with chipping and then go from there which has phenomenal results by the way okay so last but not least okay hopefully this will be on camera and just very carefully just dab it in right across right across the top and you can let this just dry, but it will puddle. So, like, that may or may not be what you want on yours. Kind of touching up some spots I had before. So, it really does look quite a bit different after this treatment. Especially on the barrel, because it dries and looks dirty and sooty. careful because I want to knock off anything I just did for that matter and just let her sit but I think that's pretty much going to be it uh, I think I covered all of the areas no pun intended that were exposed in orange so that chip is now gone this chip is gone the other side is gone so, I mean, essentially, what I, did, what I did was take legitimate battle damage and turn it into fake battle damage. So, and then that stuff just cleans up with normal thinner. It might clean up with just water, but I'm not sure. But it's not, it's not in any solution, like the way it's uh, the, the clear liquid it's suspended in. Is not thinner or anything else like that, but what it might be mineral spirits, so it's not affecting this kind of paint. But ultimately, there we go. I didn't realize I went out to wide angle. So, see, it looks a little worse for wear, which is actually a good thing. And that spot there, 
and then come back up here where it was blatantly orange all over the place and now it's only orange in the rusty spot so that's going to be it for fixing up the halo rifle after it got all beat up a little bit and the very first bit of damage actually came from it getting knocked over and then it just smacking against something so it can happen it will happen just you know if you're willing to take the time to fix it by all means get after it and i'm honestly very surprised that this is fine and i must have put way more coats because that whole thing is orange and like these buttons are orange that button's orange that's all lasting so yeah but i'll see you guys next time Whew, i gotta go dump out the thinner i'm getting high as hell